Why did you develop IBS? Why you? And why now? And before you say it's genetics, you have the same genes today that you had when you were a little kid, but you weren't really sick back then. In this video, I'll show you exactly why certain genes for IBS get activated and how to prevent this from happening and reverse inflammation fast. I'll review some of the scientific research and go in depth on how some of my patients address the root causes of IBS to resolve symptoms. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasari. I help my clients solve their immune inflammation and digestive dysfunction using the mind-gut immunity method. This clinical approach has helped thousands of patients resolve their symptoms, some in as little as six weeks, without the need for complex or costly interventions. This material that you're about to watch is taken straight out of my Mind-Gut Immunity Academy where people just like you learn how to beat their irritable bowel symptoms for good, even when the diagnosis is unclear. Now I'm gonna show you in this brief video how to correctly identify the root causes when you have an inflammatory disease such as irritable bowel. I'm gonna show you what activates bad genes, how to stop this from happening in you, and what actually works. In addition, I'm gonna give you some very useful tips on the exact five areas to focus your attention on when planning your approach for irritable bowel inflammation. Now before we go any further, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up to date. These are must-see videos for anyone with IBS looking to reverse their symptoms for good. And it's really helpful information that you probably won't get anywhere else. Now on the topic of root causes for IBS. The mistake I see most people make is that they just assume that bad genes are the reason they have IBS. And you may be thinking, if genes are the problem, why didn't I have these problems earlier? Now, I wanna point out that in general, people have genes which trigger an immune reaction. These immune reactions can come from histamine, they can come from autoantibodies, they can come from B or T lymphocytes, which are specialized white blood cells. And all these together can potentiate a response, an attack on your cells. The immune system is triggered over time, which causes slow damage through inflammation. And in fact, inflammation makes it very difficult to know exactly when the symptom started, when the irritable bowel actually develops. Now, you shouldn't be surprised by this because around 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your intestines. So when you have an inflammatory disease, such as IBS, you can be sure that there's potentially something wrong in your gut or elsewhere in your body. You can also consider the other factors involved that activate the inflammation. So before we dive in, if you're serious about finding the right solution for IBS and achieving results fast, don't forget to sign up for a free training where I walk you through the specific strategies that have helped my clients with IBS achieve health within six weeks. You can access the training at the link below this video and I know it'll help you so much. The link takes you to a page where you enter in your email to get started. Everything you need to know is in there, including a free step-by-step -step guide with specific recommendations, tons of helpful case studies of people just like you who reverse their conditions for good and are now healthy. And these are people just like you who have IBS, who can say now that they're disease-free and feeling much better. It comes with a complete actionable game plan for how you can do this yourself at home. So just enter in your email at the top of the page and get started. Be sure to check that out. Now check out this video I recorded earlier explaining the real root causes for irritable bowel syndrome and what to look out for. Let's take a closer look at the genetics of irritable bowel syndrome specifically because it warrants a discussion. I debated whether or not to even include this section in the course because I think in a way it detracts from the message that even if you have a few bad genes, you have the potential to overcome them by following the mind-gut immunity method. That being said, I've decided that at least giving you some context into the genetics research is worthwhile. So in the 1990s, before we had full genetic sequencing, scientists could identify a handful of genes associated with IBS. Now that we can sequence the entire genome, we have these things called genome-wide association surveys, where we take large groups of people all with the same disease and see what mutations they have as a group that differ from the general population. Here's a picture of what that looks like. And don't worry if this doesn't make total sense to you. Every dot represents a gene cluster with a specific gene variation. Anytime you have a bad gene variation for a disease, the dots start to stack up into these rows. It turns out that there are several dozen genes associated with IBS. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend memorizing all of these at this time. Eventually, we'll be developing targeted gene therapies for these. But for now, I want to go back to this concept map here of genetics and inflammation. 
Even though there are several dozen human genes associated with irritable bowel, recall that I said that these genes could be turned on and off depending on how you behave and respond to triggers. Second, not every cell in the body uses every gene. The important takeaway here is that whether or not you have quote unquote good genes or bad genes that cause inflammation, they're not always on. You have the ability to control them. But what you need to learn is how. And that's where many doctors fall short. They don't tell you how. They're so quick to blame genetics and prescribe medication that they don't think for a second that perhaps there's a way to control whether a gene is turned on or off. Okay, now would be a good time to mention, so far we've been talking about human genes, and that can be turned on and off. But remember that our body is also host to billions of microbes. These microbes harbor their own sets of DNA, which can cause inflammatory metabolites. Some of these microbes help us, but some of them harm us. And the correct balance is what we seek. Believe it or not, if we take the sum total of all the genes in our body, only 1% is actually human. The other 99% come from bacteria and other microbes, mostly living in our intestines and airways. For the people that like to blame genetics, you may not even have terrible genetics. Your genetics may be just fine. You may just have a bacterial imbalance and that's what's causing a significant problem. So obviously gut health is just taking off and that's why we're seeing this big push in wellness circles because the intestines are the gateway to the immune system. Just think, if you can control over 99% of the genetic diversity in your body in a favorable way, what sort of advantage will you have? I have clients who said that they've never felt healthier in their entire lives, and that's just after several weeks of working with me. So this can be achieved, and it doesn't need to be something difficult or overly complicated. According to genome surveys, there are dozens of genes associated with IBS, but we only need to pay attention to what triggers them. And these triggers are diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise, the big five. Remember, I alluded to these in the beginning. These environmental triggers are collectively referred to as epigenetics. The prefix epi denotes a higher position because epigenetics control genetics. In reality, it's epigenetics, not genetics, that really matters because these are all things within our control that can directly impact how much inflammation we have in our body. This course is designed to leverage these five key elements and maximize them in order to heal the body. So if you're wondering where you should spend all your time and energy and focus, it's on these five. It took me several years to finally figure this out, that we need to approach irritable bowel as a three-part problem. And we need to target our approach to all three components, not just one. And if you can optimize all three parts, then you have a pretty good chance of the IBS just going away. Just look at this. The gut contains 100 million neurons, and it's the largest producer of neurotransmitters in the body. That's why it's earned the nickname, it's the second brain. It's also host to one trillion immune cells, which means a majority of your immune system is actually housed in the gut. So what are the principles we can leverage to favorably optimize the three parts of this axis? What is the most important and relevant question you can ask yourself? The answer, as I've said earlier, are the big five epigenetic environmental triggers. Diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise. They're the same five factors I mentioned. If I had to assign percentages to each one of these categories, I would say diet is roughly a third, and digestion is roughly a third. So combined, they represent more than half the impact. And that's because most of your immune system is in your gut, and most of your genetic diversity is in your gut, in the form of microbes. So what goes in your gut, what lives in your gut, and what leaves your gut determines inflammation. Simple as that. The other categories in the big five are sleep, stress, and exercise. I included a six miscellaneous category here to discuss some very obvious things such as smoking, dental hygiene, and other confounders, which should be obvious to everyone at this point, but sometimes they're not. For example, one of my clients with immune disease didn't know that smoking made her condition worse. I had another client who didn't consistently floss or mouthwash who ended up getting joint pain and mouth sores. I had another one with sleep apnea and low testosterone who never got a sleep study or his hormones checked. So I included this six miscellaneous category here to remind you not to miss something very obvious that can have a sizable impact on your health. Now, 
I want to also point out that because, you know, I hear this coming up a lot. If you have stress, don't make excuses. A little stress by itself doesn't cause major harm. Its effects are contained, but if you let the stress affect other parts of your life, for example, if it leads to poor eating habits or bad sleeping patterns, then you have a recipe for immune dysfunction and inflammation. So don't let stress ruin you. It just makes up a small part of this equation. And you need to be firmly committed towards these five concepts in order to master the mind gut immunity method. A disciplined and positive attitude will help you overcome disease. Now I want to know, which one of those five triggers are the most significant for you? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, help support my channel by sharing it with your loved ones and be sure to subscribe for more useful tips on IBS. This is Dr. Chandu Dasri with the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic and I'll see you next time.